Welcome to DOS Geek. I have been so excited to bring this video to my audience about the Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K card because this is a very misunderstood piece of equipment that has a lot of awesome packed into it. So let's get into this card and show you what it can do. First of all, the Intensity Pro 4K has native Linux support. So whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you can utilize this card and you're gonna have no issues, including setting up firmware updates or utilizing some of the software they have packaged with one of the exceptions, of course, being uh, a piece of software they include for video editing called DaVinci Resolve. And that piece of software specifically, you're gonna need CentOS in order to get it to work. There are workarounds in Ubuntu and other things that people have put out there, I have tried them all. I have been unable to get DaVinci Resolve to work in any of them, but CentOS has native support for it. Apparently a lot of big studios utilize REGL, RHEL, or CentOS as their servers when they're doing production. So that's why it's supported out there, but you don't really need any of their software at all. Most people who are going to be using this device uh, are probably more familiar with Caden Live, OBS, Shotcut, and all of those programs will work with this device here. Now, what is the Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K? Well, it's a capture card, and that's all it is. It's gonna capture anything with the connections that it has that you connect to it, but it is not going to act as the hardware encoder for you, meaning that if you're trying to use it for streaming, which you certainly can, you can use it to stream a PlayStation, you can use it to, to stream any of your devices that you want uh, if you're using in Linux, for instance, but it's not going to do the encoding for you. So you're not going to see a drop in CPU usage and memory. So if you're already having issues, and this is where all the complaints that I read came from this card was that they couldn't get that portion of it to work or wasn't dropping the CPU usage or memory. And they state that throughout on this card. It is not meant as a Elgato HD. It does capture things like Elgato, but it doesn't have that encoder in it, and it doesn't do that compression with it. So you get a much cleaner, more studio professional looking view. So it's not going to cut down on your memory CPU usage. So that's very important because I thought I wasn't gonna like this card based on some of the reviews, but after I started reading them, it seemed to be certain complaints that of people who misunderstood what this card was really for. Let me just give you a quick demonstration here in OBS. Right now, what we're streaming is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System right here. That is connected to the Blackmagic card that is installed in my computer, and we are on Linux right now. We're using Xubuntu, and you can see that it's streaming it in 720p, which is the max for this device, but it can record anything all the way up to 4K. So you got that new PlayStation Pro Ultra, ultra High Definition, console and you want to stream it utilizing your Linux machine, you can do that with this card. There are some competitors out there like the Magewell, but they're a lot more expensive. This card ran me about $160, making it in line with most of Elgato's products, for instance. And it also has a lot more options and power than some of the ones that are similarly priced. And it has Linux native support. So it's important to remember that Blackmagic is a cinema company first and foremost. Their whole goal, they sell equipment that's two, four, five thousand dollars on up so that production studios and things can capture live TV. Uh, they can do any of their uh, production and editing on these devices and that's who they primarily market to. And because of that, this device is made for that type of capturing there, but it's certainly at a price that a consumer level can use it and enjoy it and if you look at the back they give you some examples here they show like a vcr a video camera game console and those type of things and all of the connection options that you have that can work through this device you have an hdmi in and out uh, right from the go as you can see on this screen here showing a picture so you've got your dvi you have your hdmi in and out and then you have a connector that goes into your dvi connection to connect all kinds of different devices here, which we're showing the analog breakout cam uh, cable that's included. It's got the analog video in, out, audio in, audio out, and spdiff, spdiff uh, audio there for you as well. 
And one of the key things here, which a lot of people who are in movie studio production and things aren't going to understand is it has a 10 bit color depth. So eight bit color depth. This is just kind of an example of what eight bit gradient can be eight bit gradient can be versus a 10 bit gradient. So much more smooth production and colors that you're going to get out of that. going to be kind of hard to see on a system that's, you know, uh, kind of restructured from the 90s back into today, only running at 720p with 8-bit graphics, but uh, you can kind of get the point. I wanted to show you could capture anything. And Nintendo is obviously super popular right now. So that's the main complaint is that this does not have a hardware encoder in it, um, but you could still use this to stream. For instance, uh, if you wanted to have another PC, you want to have a streaming setup like the pro streamers do. If you had another PC, hooked up a lot of pro streamers use dual PCs to do their streaming content. You could put this card in your secondary PC and that could be a pretty low end machine. It doesn't have to be as powerful as your gaming machine. And it can capture all the footage and take all the encoding off of your main machine. So you can still, there are still alternatives in ways that you can use it for that. Uh, but again, that's not what it's really meant to do. And playing rocket league streaming through the device uses about 30% of my CPU and utilizing the device uses the same amount about 30 percent of my cpu uh, now there could be some you know arguments made that the encoding is a little bit better or not but really that's not what it's uh meant main service is for while you can live stream with it you could just use obs this is meant to capture other devices so another use case for this for instance is you know instead of using the logitech webcam like i have here I could use a DSLR, which is what a lot of people use. I could connect it through, I could capture that and use it as my webcam, which is what a lot of people do to get that really crisp image in their videos and something that I'm even considering doing because even utilizing this Logitech Brio 4K, which I'll be doing a review on, the picture quality difference is just so minimal. They're just not good enough compared to a full censored camera. Now to get this card installed and working is really not that difficult of a task. It comes with three pieces of software and we can take a look at those here real quick. And we'll go to Blackmagic. And you've got a Blackmagic desktop video setup program. You've got the Blackmagic firmware update so you can do your update directly from Linux or your operating system of choice. And you have Media Express, which would be like their version of OBS where you can capture videos and even do some editing through it. The desktop video setup program specifically is pretty neat because one of the things that I also saw in the complaints is, well, I don't know what settings to use and you're going to have to tweak with this a little bit. Well, if you go to this desktop video setup, you can see that the input I have is 720p 60, which means anything I'm trying to set up to capture this device with an OBS or anything else should be set at the 720p 60 so it can capture it accurately. Otherwise, there are no issues with it. So you can utilize that. And then, of course, they have their Media Center software. And all of these come on an SD card for you to install. And this is the Media Express uh, software. And obviously, I'm capturing already with OBS, so I'm not going to go through and capture. But you can capture and edit some tape utilizing these programs, which all work perfectly within Linux. Again, the only one that does not work is the DaVinci Resolve. Uh, you will need the lib PNG 12-0 uh, source to be added for you to be able to install all these software, all these software packages. Otherwise, they're just .deb files and pretty easy to install. They actually come in a bunch of different versions. Uh, the ones I used with Ubuntu was the .deb files uh, to install. So you've got your firmware updates, which I was able to do uh, quite easily. You've got some software to play with, but of course, you can just use your native applications with it. So what are some of the other advantages of this? Well, obviously you've got capture and playback at ultra HD at 30 frames per second. You can capture at 1080p at 60 frames per second, four lane PCIe card for four, eight, 16 lane slots, HDMI 1.4 B standard ingest HDMI, YUV S video and NTSC POW. Save video compressed or uncompressed, capture directly to popular NLEs, output to high resolution HDTVs, connect cameras for live streaming, create 60 frame per second gameplay walkthroughs with this card. So you've got lots of things that you can do and hook up. And I think just overall, it's such a fantastic card. And I wish it got more love than it does because Blackmagic, the studio has given native Linux support, native Mac support, 
and of course Windows support out there. So it's really nice to have a company out there supporting anybody who's out there wanting to do capture devices. They have a few other options out there besides the Intensity Pro 4K. They have a shuttle and then they have the Intensity Pro uh, by itself. But this one met all the needs and I love the HDMI connections because most of the equipment I have today is HDMI. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you will continue or consider taking a look at the Intensity Pro 4K as an option if you're looking to capture your PlayStation, Xbox, digital SLR, video cameras, or any other device that you have, a new Super Nintendo Entertainment System that you want to show people because it's a really cool device with really cool options out there. And until next time, get out there and capture some moments of your life and fill your brains.